hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from thomas sower black poverty is a fault of white people you guys i'm super excited as always if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please consider subscribing give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and without much ado let's see what thomas sower has for us in this video i don't believe you change hearts I believe you change laws, you change allocation of resources, you change the way systems operate. You're not going to change every heart, but th at the end of the day, we can do a whole lot to change some systems and create more opportunities for people who deserve to have them." Close quote. Is there anything in there that would lead to policies that might actually improve opportunities for African Americans? That's the easiest question of all, no. Those who have promoted the prevailing social vision in which lags, gaps, or disparities to the detriment of black people are the fault of white people mm. are trapped in the corollary that these lags, gaps, or disparities should disappear once those other people are constrained by civil rights and policies, mm. uh, civil rights laws and policies. But nothing of the sort has happened. White people bind themselves to behave better by passing civil rights laws and black lives should improve. But nothing of the sort has happened, you argue. In material terms, there has been some improvement. But that, in, that improvement uh, began long before the civil rights laws were passed. From uh, 1940 to 1960. 1940, 87% uh, of black families in the United States were in poverty. Mm. Uh, 87%. 87. 1960, uh, it's 47. Mm. So there's a decline of 40 percentage points in that 20 year wow. period. In That's one in a generation and a half. Yeah, say, and this is before the, the welfare state comes in under Lyndon Johnson in the form of the war on poverty, the civil rights laws, and so forth. Now, over the next 20 years from 60 to 80, the rate, rate of poverty among uh, black families goes down an additional 18 percent, which is fine. But it's the continuation of a pre existing trend at a slightly lower rate. So it's not, and, and yet it's credited in the media and even in academia, it's credited usually to the civil rights laws and to the Johnson war on poverty. But of course, that, that this, this was just a continuation of the previous uh, trend. What, what's real, what really turned bad were the things, the social degeneration that occurred over that period. Mm. Uh, I could go on for days about the social degeneration. But let me give you just one quick example. When I grew up in Harlem in the 40s and 50s, I never heard a gunshot. Now, I'm sure someone fired a gun somewhere in Harlem, but it was not such a pervasive yeah, thing it wasn't that you had to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I have relatives in Washington. I asked them the same question. People of my generation. Growing up in did, Washington, D.C. Yes, and, and low-income uh, black neighborhoods. Did you ever hear a gunshot when you were growing up? And the answer was no. I have relatives in North Carolina ask the same question. No. And now, uh, you know, people in housing projects especially, they put kids, some of them, in, uh, to bed in bathtubs so that they won't be hit by stray bullets in the night. Wow. That's what, that's, the, the homicide rate in, uh, in the years that I was growing up, and I was really quite lucky as I went through the research I discovered, being in the right place at the right time. Uh, the homicide victimization rate among black males uh, in, in, the de in the decade of the 1940s, uh, declined by 18%. Uh, from, 1940, okay. yeah, from 1950 to 1960, it declined another 22%. And then in 1960, uh, ni in the 1960s, when all these wonderful new ideas in the criminal justice system came in, all of that reversed, and it shot up 89% in one decade, what? wiping out all the progress of the two preceding wow. decades. And you could run through a great number That's of other insane. things. Uh, the the, the uh, uh, children raised without, without two parents present. Hmm. That was about 22% in 1960. One generation later, it was 67%. And it's gone up a little since wow. then as well. And, some, and, the, and now the rate among whites 
is higher than it was among blacks in 1960. Right. Why, you guys? This is very, very deep. And what Thomas Sowell is saying, in essence, is that the rate of crime increased after the welfare state came out because most kids were being raised without their fathers. And we all know what the essence of a father can cause in a home. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section. I love the way Thomas Sowell explains a particular topic because after listening to him, listening to Thomas Sowell, you are able to see the real picture and he gives a very good example for you to compare and contrast how things were in the 1940s and how things are going today in the black community. You all can see that the crime rate has increased exponentially once the welfare state was introduced let me know what your thoughts are on this video and let's continue watching you guys uh so this, so if you look at what actually happens in the wake of these wonderful sounding policies uh you see disaster after disaster all right so very important question are the wonderful sounding policies simply irrelevant beside the point or do they actually play a role in these social pathologies it would be an incredible. It would be an incredible co uh, coincidence. But you you see, and in fact, and I, I go into this in more detail in the sec in this uh, second edition in the book. Uh, you see exactly the same pattern in in Britain, and all the things that are I mean, in fact right right down to uh, riots in London, Manchester, and other cities, which read just like riots in Ferguson and Baltimore, and and there's no and and, all, and the things like uh, you know race is not an issue because most of those people are white who are doing all these things right down to setting fire to police cars hmm. so so you see the same policies are brought in and the other, another thing that's very similar and this gets into human capital again people are saying you know poor people can't rise in, the, in america anymore uh, and the data that they use leave out immigrants oh. immigrants come here with little more than the clothes on their back go in here and and by the next generation, their kids are excelling in school, going off to leading colleges and into professions. That's true. I don't believe you change hearts. I believe you change laws. You change allocation of resources. You change the way systems operate. You're not going to change every heart, but th at the end of the day, we can do a whole lot to change some systems and create more opportunities for people who deserve to have them. Close quote. Is there anything in there that would lead to policies that might actually improve opportunities for African Americans? The easiest question of all, no. <laughs> uh, and and uh, I noticed that Hillary Clinton is, and, and many, many of the people who support the welfare state, uh, who incidentally, they all, when they want to help black people, they want to help those black people who are doing something wrong. That is, rioters, uh, uh, ex-convicts, uh, you, you know, they, they, they want to stop the schools from disciplining black kids, who, males who, dis, who, who misbehave in school. I don't hear them worry, concerning themselves about the blacks who are the victims of the people who are doing wrong. Yeah. Uh, one, of the class, and one of the classic examples to me of thing, a few things that are going very well in, in the ghettos across the country, and that's uh, some of the charter schools that have come in where uh, where the rest the public schools the kids are just wiped out I mean the kids in those, those ghetto schools often are two or three years behind the national norms and all kinds of stuff but in some of these ghetto schools especially those run by the KIPP organization or by the uh, success these charter academy, schools char I'm right, sorry right. Mm -hmm. yeah, ch charter schools in the ghetto right uh, they their kids are scoring at levels equal to and in some cases better than that in affluent suburbs where the kids come from family who's making 200 grand a year mm. and you would think my god this is something that ought to get a lot of attention the welfare state supporters are fighting against charter schools the NAACP is fighting against charter schools wow. uh, the teachers unions give a lot of money to politicians they give money to the NAACP Moreover, if you have uh, people coming in with charter schools, then you don't have the local political ward healers, as it were, controlling all these resources that they can use to re reward their friends and punish their enemies. And so, therefore, they want to control of the schools because the schools are a source of jobs. Uh, whether or not the kids learn anything is not their concern. I think, I think it's the most cynical thing you can find in American politics are those uh, people 
who are making themselves big champions of blacks and yet who are fighting against it. The one, one school, kinds of schools, that are offering a way out of poverty for millions of black kids. Not only do charter schools educate kids from the very same ghetto neighborhoods, in many cases, and I believe in most cases, they educate them in the same buildings. Oh, really? Yes. And so you'll have the, you know, like, like, like the public school 185, and they're on uh, the first, second floor, and up on the third floor, there'll be the kids from the charter school. Of course, they don't, they don't usually build buildings for charter schools. I mean, it's too expensive. Oh. And the kids on the first th three floors, you know, are scoring down below the 10th percentile. And the kids on the third floor are scoring above the 80th and sometimes 90th percentile. And they're in the very same building. Mm. And, they, and they were not chosen by k skimming the cream. They were chosen by lottery. At a dire time in my life as a young man, <laughs> I pawned my one suit in order to get money to be able to eat. After emerging from a pawn shop on the Lower East Side of New York, which was, predominantly, which was a predominantly Jewish neighborhood at the time, I went into a nearby eating place and ordered a knish and an orange soda. Many years later, I would eat at the Waldorf Astoria, in Parisian restaurants, and in the White House. But no meal ever topped that knish and orange soda. Close quote. And none ever will. And none ever will. <laughs> How? And I didn't sit there thinking about how somebody else, somewhere else, was eating in more opulent places, more high-toned meals, and so on. I was glad to have that condition on our soda. Well, you're answering my question, I suppose, because my question is, how is it that Tom Sowell, how is it that you went from a situation that was so dire that you had to pawn some clothes to eat, mm -hmm. to becoming author of over a dozen books. I, I know you won't like this, but beloved figure, every time we do a show with you and we put a, you're a rock star. Uh, yeah. People just, how, so how, what enabled you? Was it something you learned at, at home? Where did you, well, how yeah. did you decide to work hard and develop the talents you well, had you know, instead you know, of messing around in politics? You could have become an activist and wasted your life by your own argument. I didn't have any political talent, first of all. <laughs> so that's, some politician said he wanted to sort of ease the pain of people in poverty. And he said, actually, the pain of poverty is what got many people out of poverty. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting video from Thomas Sowa. And this was very, very insightful and oh my gosh i loved thomas so 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 much let me know what you guys think about this video what do you think is a root cause in the black community do you think it is caused by white people let me know in the comment section down below i really enjoyed every minute of this video and i believe you guys also enjoyed watching if you enjoy watching give this video a massive thumbs up comment share and all that good stuff and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys